Okay, we're gonna make a pinhole camera out of a little film canister. So I started off with just a regular film canister and I've already cut just a little bit of a hole, but I think I'm gonna make that a little bit larger and this is, I'll show you how I make the hole. Basically, I just take an X-Acto knife like this and start digging in at, in kind of a circular motion. And then once you kind of get in there, it's pretty easy to widen that out and just kind of keep going on the, getting that deeper and deeper in there and it makes it a little bit bigger. All right, when you have it as big as you think you need it, you're gonna have all kinds of little bits and pieces of plastic in there that you need to get off. So take some uh, sandpaper and just try to get it inside that little, that hole and just kind of work that sandpaper to get those little bits off. You really want to get that uh, in, this, in the inside actually because we want our metal, probably one of the, the tricky things about this is getting the metal flashing that's going to have the actual pinhole in it to sit flat on the inside of the canister. So I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm kind of putting it at an angle so that I'm sanding the inside. And you could take the lid off too and try to get in there and sand that down so it's nice and flat. And if you have a knife, you can also just kind of use the knife to clean that up a little bit and get those little bits. You don't want those getting in the way of the flashing sitting flush inside. And you also don't want those little bits getting in the way of your, uh, of your image. So you wanna get that hole as clean as you can. All right, once I've got, whoops. <laughs> once I've got the hole, then I'm ready to make the actual pinhole. This is not the actual pinhole. So the pinhole I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna make with just a regular thumbtack like that. You could use a T-pin. Um, a needle is actually really good because you can adjust the size. You can use different sizes of needles to get different F-stops and different uh, sizes of aperture. The thing I don't like about a needle is that it's, it's hard to push into a piece of aluminum flashing. It hurts my fingers. So unless you have a thimble or some way of pushing the needle through, I think a push pin like this is the best way to go. All right, you need to have, this is just regular aluminum flashing that I got at the hardware store. It's very inexpensive. You can use copper flashing as well. Uh, I've seen people use aluminum foil even. Uh, I think that's a little thin and tears easily, but in a pinch you could, you could try that. Um, so aluminum flashing, uh, or copper flashing, it's thin enough that you that it's it's sturdy and definitely opaque. Um, uh, I'm sorry, thick enough that it's sturdy and opaque, but thin enough that it's easy to cut. And I want to cut a piece that is bigger than the hole because I want to make sure. Basically, what we're going to do is put this inside here, and it's gonna you know it's gonna the pinhole is going to be right there. So we want to make it big enough to bigger than this hole but also not so big that it's hard to get in there. So I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit. Um, I have found that a piece about the size of my thumbnail is about what I want. So, you know, it's, a, it's about that size, you know. Um, okay, and to make the pinhole, I'm gonna take my thumbtack I'm gonna drive it straight down, and I have some uh, some cardstock under here so that the pin has something to go through. If you do this right directly on a hard table, you're not gonna have anything for the pin to go through on the other side of the metal. So put some kind of padding underneath there, uh, nothing too soft, a craft cutting mat is perfect, um, like they use for crafts, or just some, like some pieces of car like cardboard or cardstock or something. All right, I'm gonna put it right in the middle Make sure your pin's not dull, also. Put it right in the middle, and I'm gonna push straight down. You don't wanna wiggle in a circle because you'll make the hole misshapen, and you don't, you don't want that. You want it as perfectly circular as possible. So I'm gonna go straight down, just making sure that the pin goes all the way through. And if it's standing up like that, I can be pretty sure that it's all the way through sticking in the cardstock. Okay, and then I can see that the, the 
needle has come through just a tiny bit, which is good. Okay, you don't want a large pinhole. It's, it's called a pinhole for a reason. It should be very, very tiny. All right, that's the side that I went through and you can see that it's a little bit concave as it goes down into the hole. The other side has a little burr on it and you can feel that. I wanna sand down that burr. So I'm gonna take my sandpaper and try to pin this down with my fingers and just sand that down and you want it as flat as you can get it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just feel with your fingers, you want it nice and flat. All right, that is the side, you can see this, the rough, the roughness from the sandpaper. So that's the side that's gonna face out. It's gonna face that, you know, out towards the world, not inside to the canister. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down with the sanded side down, the concave part I can see. And I'm gonna use, um, I like to use uh, black electrical tape like this. This is ideal, or this is actually like a black masking tape, but you can use electrical tape also. Um, so I'm gonna use this. If you don't have this, then duct tape is probably the next best thing or regular brown masking tape would be, would be third. I don't think it's even worth messing with scotch tape or packing tape at all because they're clear. And you, need, you might need to have that, um, that ability to, to block light out. So black masking tape, if you can get it, electrical tape or duct tape. And I'm just gonna, I don't need very much. I'm just gonna tear a little piece, tear that in half. And then I'm gonna tear those in half lengthwise. Okay, so I have pieces like that. And I'm gonna put it around the outside all the way around. I want plenty of sticky stuff overlapping the outside because that's what's gonna stick to the, to the inside of the canister. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Whoop. Try to hold that up to the camera. All right, so the sticky side is facing the same side as the sanded side. The sanded and the sticky are the same, all right? And then that's, that's the back. Make sure you don't cover the hole. Okay, so this is gonna go inside our canister like this, but first, you really want it to lay flush. It has to lay flush against the inside of the canister. And the inside of the canister is slightly curved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of bend this just a little bit. Being careful not to put a crease in there, of course. I don't wanna, I don't wanna fold it. And I'm also, these corners kind of got a little bit of a dog ear from when I cut them. They, it seems like a very, very minor thing, but it can make a big difference. All right, so you want that to lay in there nice and flat, fit right along that concave interior of the canister. So you can see how that's got a little bit of a curve to it. And now when I put that in there, I'm gonna make it so that the pinhole is centered and then I'm gonna just stick it in there. Use my fingers to get the tape stuck in there this is gonna, the way, the, how well you can get this to fit inside there is gonna make or break your camera. Because if there's, if light gets in between the aluminum and the plastic right in there, that little seam right in there, then the light's gonna get in there and flood your camera. You'll have a light leak and it won't, you know, your, your paper will just expose, which, which is not good. You, the only way light should be able to get in there is through that tiny little pinhole, at least when we have the lid on. Okay, I like to use my fingernail. I like to use my fingernail to get this nice and tight in there. I'm kind of going around the edge with my fingernail and getting it nice and flush in there. Okay, and that, that really is it. Okay, now I put the lid on there and that's a camera. It's just an empty space. That's all a camera is, a dark room. Okay, so now I'm ready to make an exposure. So I'm gonna take a piece of photographic paper. Now the rest of this you have to do 
in the dark. I'm gonna get a piece of uh, photo paper. Whoops, find the piece of photo paper I had. One side is blue because it's exposed. This is the emulsion side. That's why you're gonna do this in the dark. And that's the back side. It's a little bit tricky to tell which is in the dark, but just by feel, which is the emulsion side. But the emulsion side of most papers is gonna have a slight texture to it. And you can even kind of see in the light that this has a little bit of a pearly kind of finish to it. All right, another way you can that you can tell, this is not ideal, but you can lick your thumb and forefinger and then squeeze the paper and the gelatin should stick to the wet, your wet finger should stick to the gelatin side. Okay, so that's another way that you can tell. You want the gelatin side, you're gonna put it in the camera on the opposite side where the pinhole is. So you can put your finger here to make sure that the paper's facing it and you're gonna put the paper in here, over here, so that the light is gonna go through the pinhole and make an exposure on the, on the paper. All right, slide it down. Okay, again, pinhole here, paper on the other side so that the emulsion inside is facing the pinhole. All right, once the camera is loaded, close it up. Now you can go out in the light, but keep your finger over the pinhole. Your finger is, the, is your shutter curtain. So now you can go out in the light, and I'm gonna take a picture. You're just gonna set it on something still. And then when you're ready to make the picture, let go so that it can expose. And then, you know, the exposure time is gonna take a lot of trial and error. If you're outside and it's a really bright sunny day, it might take 10 or 15 seconds. If you're inside, uh, depending on the lighting that you have inside, it could take anywhere from two minutes to 30 minutes. I mean, it really is gonna vary quite a bit, especially if you're inside using artificial light. It's gonna take a lot of trial and error, okay? But once you make your, your picture, when the exposure is done, you're gonna close up the pinhole, then you're gonna go back in the dark, okay? And again, pretend the lights go out, lights are out. I'm gonna take my paper out of my camera and put it into a canister that does not have a hole in it. This is gonna be my developing tank, all right? That is a light safe developing tank. I'm gonna take some developer I'm just going to pour some developer in there, or you can give it a couple of healthy squirts. Okay, so that's about uh, a third of the way full. And I'm going to close that. And then to develop it, I'm just going to hold it by the side, or hold it sideways, and rotate it. And paper developer, this paper developer takes about a minute and a half. So you're just gonna do this for about a minute and a half. Again, the lights are out. You're doing this in the dark. All right, after a minute and a half, I'm not gonna do the whole minute and a half. In the dark, you've gotta take this lid off. Pour it back in there. You can recycle this developer. Make sure you get the lid on there so you don't fumble around and spill things in the dark. And then I would put, uh, I would put water in there. The water, close the lid, shake it up for about uh, 30 seconds or so, dump the water out. And then I'm gonna use fixer. The fixer, and you can, I don't know if you can tell, because the paper was exposed, look, it turned black. It was blue before and now it's turned black because the developer. All right, hopefully your picture doesn't just turn totally black. All right, and then, but you then after the water, you take the fixer, pour a little in there, shake it up. Now the fixer takes a little longer. You're gonna rotate it like this for about five minutes. All right, after five minutes, pour the developer back, or I'm sorry, the fixer, pour the fixer back you can recycle that as well. And at this point, you can turn the light on because it's been fixed. So it's, it's no longer light sensitive anymore. 
So now you can turn the light on and hopefully when you look in there, you see a picture, all right? You see something more like this. That had a little light leak, so it's got some weird lines on it, but it's, it's an old time camera. It's an old um, bellows camera. I'm not sure how well you can tell. And, and it's a negative, it's not a positive, it's a negative. So what you can do is photograph that with your phone and then invert the screen, invert the colors on your screen to see it as a positive. Or you could scan this and invert it in Photoshop, whatever. You could print it out larger if you wanted to. Okay, and that's it. And then clean out your, clean out your camera, put another piece of paper in and try it again. All right, so that's the whole thing. It's a little home pinhole camera kit. Um, you could travel with it, whatever you needed to do. All right, pretty nifty, all right? Um, good luck with that and have fun.